So the rotator cuff is, of course, one of the most important parts of the shoulder in terms of the anatomy and the function of the shoulder in practice. So let's take you through in this video the 3D anatomy of the rotator cuff. If you're ready, let's dive in. Hey guys, Khalid here. Welcome back to Clinical Physio. In this video, let's dive into the rotator cuff. So first of all, we're going to remove some of the key external muscles of the shoulder so we can focus in on the rotator cuff. Now, first of all, we have four rotator cuff muscles, which we can remember with the acronym SITS, S-I-T-S. S stands for supraspinatus, I stands for infraspinatus, T stands for teres minor, and the final S stands for subscapularis. So the first thing to say that we can remember more easily the relative origins and insertions of these muscles is because all of them originate on the scapula and all of them insert into the proximal humerus. So that's a really important foundation point just to remember your anatomy. But now let's dive into this a little bit more and break it down, starting with the supraspinatus muscle. So the supraspinatus originates at the supraspinous fossa of the scapula. As you can imagine, this is the fossa superior to the spine of scapula and clearly identifies why this muscle is called the supraspinatus muscle. It then runs underneath the acromion before it inserts into the greater tuberosity of the humerus. More specifically, the superior facet or the superior part of the greater tuberosity of the humerus. And the nerve supply for this muscle comes from the suprascapular nerve, as you can see here. So next we have the infraspinatus muscle. So this muscle originates at the infraspinous fossa, so the fossa which is inferior to the spine of the scapula. And naturally, that is how we know that this muscle has the name infraspinatus. Now, it also inserts into the greater tuberosity of the humerus, but more specifically, it inserts into the middle facet, or perhaps the middle part of the greater tuberosity. And much like the supraspinatus, this muscle also takes its nerve supply from the suprascapular nerve. Next, we have teres minor. So this muscle originates at the lateral border of the scapula before it also inserts into the greater tuberosity. Now, whereas the supraspinatus inserted into the superior facet, the infraspinatus into the middle facet, the teres minor inserts into the inferior facet, or perhaps the inferior part of the greater tuberosity. But all three muscles insert into the same place. And the nerve supply for teres minor comes from the axillary nerve. This is a really important nerve. It also supplies the deltoid muscle. And when it gets injured, it can give palsies of these two muscles. And common times that it gets injured could be after a proximal humeral fracture or an anterior shoulder dislocation, for example. Finally, we have the subscapularis muscle. Unlike the others, this big muscle is located on the anterior surface of the scapula, as you can see here. And it originates from the subscapular fossa, which effectively fans across the whole anterior surface of the scapula. And unlike the others, which all insert into the greater tuberosity, the subscapularis is the only rotator cuff muscle that inserts into the lesser tuberosity. Notice that the greater tuberosity is on the lateral side of the humerus, and the lesser tuberosity is located on the medial side of the humerus. That is quite important. Now, in terms of function, the location of these muscles can remind us about their individual functional roles. So three of the muscles that we looked at are all located on the posterior side of the shoulder. These are supraspinatus, infraspinatus, and teres minor. And so this is just one way that we can remember that all three of these muscles are external rotators of the humerus at the glenohumeral joint because when they contract from their posterior position, they're going to pull the humerus in an externally rotated position. And therefore, it makes sense that that is their role. 
One keynote, which is the location of the supraspinatus as the most superior muscle of these three, as its location does suggest that it could play a role in abduction of the shoulder. Now, whilst this is a controversial subject, whilst we look at it in pure anatomical terms, it does make sense that it has that abduction role as well as the external rotation role. Conversely, subscapularis is the only muscle located on the anterior surface of the shoulder. And so we can remember that this muscle is the key internal rotator of the rotator cuff, mainly because as you can imagine from its position, when it contracts, it's going to pull the humerus in an internal rotation position. And it's really important to remember that the subscapularis is considered the largest muscle of the rotator cuff and is suggested to provide 50% of the power output for the whole rotator cuff. Now, the final thing to mention is that whilst we know these muscles and their individual roles from what we've just seen, we should also remember that they play a much bigger, more important role as a group, which is to contribute to dynamic stability of the shoulder when they work together. What does this mean? Well, dynamic stability, effectively stabilizing the shoulder during movement, dynamically. And therefore, these four muscles work together in order to stabilize the shoulder whilst it's moving, which basically means most shoulder movements. So guys, I really hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please support us by smashing that like button. And if anatomy is your thing, if you want to learn more about anatomy, we're running a whole series of anatomy boot camps, including, of course, the Shoulder Anatomy Boot Camp. For more details on this, please head to our website below, clinicalphysio.com, and follow more information on our Instagram account, at clinicalphysio. My name's Khalid. Thank you so much for watching. See you soon, here on Clinical Physio.